know. We'll just have to see what happens with this game. I'm just loading in again. If uh, you guys are just catching us now, it's the University of Manitoba versus University of Houston JV1 or Division 2 team. It's a lot on the line for these universities. These are two of the top seeded teams in this conference as well. This is top two teams? These are the top two teams, yeah. Oh wow, okay. So there's a decent amount riding on this on this match right here. Because being first seed just means so much more. Absolutely, yeah. When you're the second Super seed and you play important. possibly the, the second worst team of another one, eventually you do uh, run into the higher seeds sooner and sooner. So starting off as a first seed and you know, being able to get quote in quotations free wins but in this game uh, a lot can happen just maybe you're having a bad day that day and you start playing worse someone's tired uh, a lot has to do with conditioning and so playing even at 9 or 10 p.m. and if you are a morning person early morning person and all of your concentration your focus or energy just isn't there and the day's been rough it's very easy to just kind of fall out of focus and really be stressed out by if you make a misplay or not. Absolutely. For a lot of these players, one thing in their outside life or their school life can often lead to a bad game. So we'll just have to see what happens. This is the University of Manitoba again versus the University of Houston. We're just getting going now. This should be a good game. Let's go. Whew. Are you rubbing your hands in excitement? I am so excited right now, Van. I can't even describe how excited I am. <laughs> well, I, apparently rubbing your hands is about as exciting as it gets. Yeah, that's about as exciting as it gets. <laughs> so if we're just looking at the starts, uh, I do notice that ancient coin start that you were talking about on the NASAs. You want to elaborate a bit more on that, Van? Oh, I, I don't know anything about top lane, bud. I, I'd actually <laughs> expect that you would know more about this lane matchup. This is just something I overheard in uh, other strategic play. I've only seen it a little bit. It's I, I, uh... I've actually never seen it. Oh really? <laughs> <For real. laughs> it's just what I heard about. So anything that happens here is a it's, it's a new news to me. I can tell news. you what happens with bot lane in the jungle uh, matchups, but I, maybe even a little bit on the mid lane matchup, but definitely not top lane. It's less than I'd say like one out of a hundred games I've ever played like are in that lane. Absolutely. <laughs> so what I really commonly see from Nasus is when I do always seem to get them on my team for some reason because it's never on the enemy team. That they usually like to go start with the Ancient Coin into Trinity Force is usually what they like to see. But we might see something a little different here. But it'll probably be the Trinity Force into finishing that Talisman of Ascension. And the movement speed that you get from it is apparently very disgusting as I've heard from some people that I've heard. I'm getting a quite a bit of movement speed from just being near your turret as well. Yeah, absolutely. Any so farm that you miss, you don't actually miss? Yeah. So Pretty looking good. at these jungle starts as well, we see kind of a little of an interesting start. With yeah, this it, it, it's it's relatively outside. weird. It's kind of opposite right now, though. Oh, so and the just... RNG pays off for Kindred. If her, her mark spawns on the top Rift Scuttle. So that's uh, yeah. going to help out quite a bit. And I, I think she could actually end up ganking from the river. Mm, I'd say more so onto the Oriana. She's uh, much easier to gank, in my opinion, for the Kindred. Just kind of sneak up behind her, maybe hit a Sidra stun first. Be like, pretty ideal. Blow a flash, hopefully. If not, just outright getting a kill. Hopefully. She does step on that ward though, so I don't think we'll be seeing And Slate's anything. coming in here for the gank. Uh, I actually didn't expect him to come down for that gank, but he does end up getting a flash, two flashes out of that. Uh, heal and exhaust is still up, so yeah. pretty successful gank down there. Uh, you can definitely pressure a lot with the Karma now as well. You just kind of shield yourself forward and then you root them, and if the jungler is still there, you, you pretty much just die. Yeah, oh, we see a gank coming in on the top lane here. Yeah, Kindred so... probably won't get too much done down right here, just get some damage, not even a flash burn, but uh, it does force Harrison to go back. 
Yeah, and the lane is in a the wave's in a really bad spot right now for Harrison as well. It's in a very very bad spot, so he needs to play safe. Probably hug the bushes for a while until the kindred can either get spotted somewhere else or can get some help from UMB Slade. Oh, it hurts him. Just gonna go for the dive here. Uh, oh, looks like Gas is wet and tried greed to stay for the farm. And he even had his flash up. He actually flashed towards under his turret. And I think that was just a critical mistake where you, if you take one or two auto attacks, you're pretty much dead anyway, so... Yeah, exactly. That's if he did survive, he would be able to suck up that wave. So I guess that's more or less what he looked for, is that if he survives this tower dive, then he gets the, the wave. But he did neither, and now he's in a really bad spot. Yeah, he has this to is just back. This matchup early. Although now that the top has no flash, maybe Kim would like to visit that lane. But red buff is expiring really soon, so it's gonna be making a little ganks a little harder. Probably look to farm some more camps, maybe get a few marks down. Oh, and. There was a little bit of action there in the mid lane. Very good trade for these lane plays. So Kim has already gone back, and both junglers getting trackers knives. So they really want to find uh, just the enemy jungler, which is kind of an unusual thing for a kindred. Usually she takes challenges by oh top lane here. Sprinkles in a lot of trouble, just waiting for the leaf strike. There was the Empower, but cooldown is too long. However, the lane is in a rough spot, and he has no flash. So Slade can definitely just hover around on the top side and just deny uh, Sprinkles a lot of farm. Yeah, but that's what that Ancient Coin's for. Yeah, that's true. This matchup definitely isn't going in favor of Sprinkles as he thought it was. Early. Usually for Nasus, this is a very good matchup into the Jax, but a couple mistakes early is going to make it very difficult to continue. Kindred so level the mid lane, decided against the gank right there. Uh, buff spawning in about a minute. Oh, There's some buffs, actually. Oh, mid lane. Storm Seals go to flash oh, forward. For oh. Throws the That's auto fine. down. But both flashes are on cooldown now. But, uh, Hugh plays, does not have barrier anymore, whereas Storm Skills does have his barrier. And with Slade, he probably is going to be hitting 6 very soon after that blue. Uh, or maybe, uh, the camp after. So that's, uh, a lane he'll definitely, definitely want to visit. There's a flash down and a barrier down. That That's a free kill. So, Hugh plays is going to have to play really, really passive sitting back and respect the Sejuani gank and the ultimate. Yeah, we'll have to see. Sejuani definitely has a lot of options to go with here. Yeah, bot, have, bot having no flashes, big deal. Mid lane not having flashes. No one no one on enemy team has flash except for Kim. <laughs> All the flashes are down. Yeah, we'll just have to see. They do know that Sejuani is just finishing up that blue buff, though. And overall, the vision for both these teams is actually really, really good. We see we see uh, Hong Fam also going into the red side jungle, getting some vision, and maybe looking for a gank here on Storm Skills. Oh, nice roam from Hong Fam. Is it going to be enough? There's the exhaust and the barrier is down. One down. more Q. Is... And there it is. Slade's still not going to be on time, and he does not have Glacial Prison either, so very nice roam from uh, Hong Fam over here, uh, catching Storm Skills off guard there with the roam. And yeah. now Kim is going to look to bully Slade down, and he's going to be in a lot of trouble. The stun lands, and this should be a kill. That This is looking really bad for the U of M. This is what yeah. we didn't want to happen at all. Uh, that, that's another stack for Kim. He hits level 6, denies, takes the red as well. And Slade is still level 5, so he can't even uh, go to punish uh, Syndra with Glacial Prison. He doesn't even have it! He has to go and take another camp first before he can really do anything. And... Exactly. So and to top it all off, the Kindred Mark again spawns right behind Kim. So Houston we'll here with the early lead. Uh, 600 gold up. 
Uh, did they get first blood? No, I think U of M got first blood. Yeah, yeah, it was the uh, Harrison yeah, that got first blood. So yeah. Houston firing back. Problem if they even get this early dragon, that would be just pretty awesome. Early ocean dragon is it, it, it pays for its worth pretty easily. So they're gonna oh Harrison doing quite a bit of damage here. Sprinkles looking to trade back, and this is looking like a duel. Harrison he he's not backing down. He's gonna go for this. And he oh, should be able to win this one out. Oh, one more auto attack. The flash is coming out. Oh, flashes. Counter strike. The stun's gonna come down. And it oh, actually it ended too early. It ended too early. Slate oh. coming up here. There's the glacial prison. And he's gonna take a tower shot. Will the sprinkles fall down? And yes, that is the kill from Aftershock uh, for Slade. But I believe Harrison just barely misplayed that. He counter struck too early and dropped it just a tiny fraction of a second too early and misses the stun. Ends up costing yeah. his life. He just missed it. Oh, that was so unfortunate. It looked like that trade was so good for Harrison. But and overall, it, it is a wrong. kill and an assist on Slade uh, with catch up EXP as well for killing a level 7 uh, enemy. So that's going to help him out a lot. But uh, exactly. Sprinkles being able to take that kill down. Uh, on a gank, that's going to allow bot lane to play a little bit more aggressive as well. And for the most part, it looks like they've always been pushing. But Zeb has been able to farm pretty well overall. CS numbers are relatively even across the whole map. Uh, between junglers and every lane. Yeah, there's not too many advantages. And it's only an, eight, an 800 gold difference right now. But we'll just have to see... Oh, Slade coming up team. on the top lane. He wants to go for another gank, but he doesn't have Glitch Prison. Will the stun land? Counter Strike no coming down, and Nasus does not have ult. This should be a free kill. Uh, Kim is not in the area, so he should not be able to get here in time, and that's another kill for uh, the U of M. Harrison picking up another kill, and if, if he becomes a really, really big split push threat where uh, Sprinkles just can't handle... Ooh, Root coming down. But I think that should be the end of that trade. But yeah, if he becomes, becomes that split push threat, the do just jacks things, it, it can uh, be a real big detriment. And they don't really have any globals either. There's like no Shen, no Twisted Fate, Talia, Rise. Like none of that stuff is on the map. And uh, the jungler is Kindred. So not exactly the most CC, run someone down, uh, kill them kind of champion. So no, there's also, there's no TP in that mid lane too, so we will definitely have to look. I think Sprinkles needs to play a little bit safer in this game. He needs to not overextend so much and try and hold it off so the rest of his team can can hold the fort. Drop, drop some wards, still safe. Ooh. Flash going down in the mid lane as well on Syndra. Man, is our directed cameras looking at different things? I, I, it didn't even look at that for me. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's really strange. It's been looking at top and bot lane this whole time. Yeah. Oh, my Kim coming in. There is Scatter the Weak. Oh. The Storm Scales, the Shockwave onto Kim, but he still has his ult. He's just waiting to use it. The stun comes down, and Slade oh, just flashing under the tower. Not going to be enough. And the Q command from Storm Scales not going to be enough, even with the comment. And the fight top lane continuing on. There's the stopwatch. But I think they're just gonna like decide to step away from that fight. But that is a stopwatch burned. Now neither player in top lane has stopwatch, and still continuing to be a relatively bloody top lane. All the kills are actually up on that side. Yeah, all, this is... all the deaths and all the kills. A has oh, yeah, and oh. uh, sprinkles of DC. A has uh, and... Another person has DC. Two people have DC at the same time, and they're from the opposite team. So that's very unusual. Very unusual indeed. That's not yeah. even an ISP thing. That that's oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well said. Yeah, that was an interesting duel in the top lane. It looked like they were it looked like Harrison was actually gonna win that too. But ends up uh, going down with a stopwatch to let the sprinkles walk away. But I think so overall, whichever... Whichever player gets the Triforce first is going to dominate that lane for a little while until both players have Triforce. And and it goes back to the stalemate. Jax will continue to build more offensively, probably go for the Titanic Hydra, whereas Nasus will just continue to build tanky. 
Frozen Heart wouldn't be that bad of a choice. It would work for against Jax, the Zaya, even the Orianna. Like, a lot of damage does come out of her passive. That is true. So I think a Frozen Heart would be a nice pickup here. Yeah, definitely look to pick up that Frozen Heart. Probably third or fourth item sometime around there. Yeah, and that would bring him up to 40% CDR with the Triforce. So making him a pretty big threat. Lots of slows, lots of dueling potential, even some team utility to reduce some attack speed across multiple people. Yep, indeed. And bot lane, other than Hong Fam's roam onto mid lane, it, it, it's just kind of been a lot of trading back and forth. The the flashes that did get blown on bot lane ended up not meaning too much. Like Slade made the visit down bot lane at or after right after his double buffs, then the flashes got burned. Couldn't take advantage of it. Yeah, you, you, maybe you can get some priority mid lane and sense uh, Slade and Storm skills to, you know, perform a tower dive of some kind. Just always try and push out. But instead, it uh, goes unpunished. But it, it, I think that also came from uh, Slade dying at red to Kim from that invade, not being able to hit six sooner. And then, exactly. So that was a, a big loss of tempo for U of M. And now they're just yeah. kind of re trying to recover right now. I mean, they are, while well, they're actually up in gold, uh, how the heck are they up in gold? I guess there is a CS differentials up in top lane. 16 CS, 10 CS mid. Uh, ADCs are pretty even. Junglers are even. Kills are even. No towers taken, but a 400 gold lead. Still pretty yeah, much means nothing overall, though. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just early game gold lead, but anything that you can get is still good early on. It was pretty costly for the U of M that early invade, especially from that early roam, just lost all pressure on the top side, and that caused uh, Kim to be able to invade the red buff and pick up a kill on Slade. But they've recovered quite nicely. I feel like this laning phase is going to go on for a long time. Possibly another yeah. <laughs> like five more minutes or something. It, it, the, I feel like both teams are just kind of having a hard time really solidifying a solid lead in any of the lanes like there's kills here there's roams there but after a while it just kind of gets traded back or something doesn't get taken advantage of but slade in the bottom brush here looking to use this person and in the mid lane as well he he who plays is trying to make something happen kim as well going off with a cutoff and i think storm's in a lot of trouble here yeah he does man does get killed so slade now it's up to him to make something happen across the map and the lane is pushing so there, and he just jumps right in. There comes the Terra but when can they burst him down? No, there comes the invulnerability, but he is rooted right now. He has to flash out and try and get away. Now it's Hong Fam who's going to get focused on. He has to flash out as well. So that's all four summoners, but they do live. And so therefore, in the end, Houston actually wins out on that overall because, well, they got to kill mid and Slade pays a visit to bot lane and only gets the summoners. So... Exactly, and to top it all off too, UMB Slade's going to end up losing his entire topside jungle to Kim. He's going to lose his blue buff and his gromp as well. And I think... Oh well, Jax now has his Trinity Force. So he's going to be winning uh, quite a few of the trades. Kim is on the topside here, but there is a control ward in the river, so if he decides to come in for the gank... I'm really thinking now it's going to be turning into a farm fest because they're probably going to start end up respecting each other until the jungler shows up on the opposite side of the map. Or if a dragon decides to get uh, taken here and dragon or rift or rift herald not have, haven't been looked at yet either. No, it hasn't. This has been a, overall a pretty gruely kind of game. We've seen whether it's invades for vision from both sides really and lots of fighting especially happening around the top side of the map but we haven't really seen either team push for that first objective and we see another gank coming in here from UMB Slade and there goes the flash again from Sprinkles and it feels like he's been playing this entire laning phase without flash. Nah, that is a large portion of it. It's more like neither team has made an error so large that an objective could be taken. Like, yeah, it's a kill, but 
you didn't lose that much. The lanes weren't being pushed around enough. The junglers weren't in position. The wave wasn't in the position. Uh, someone was too low to kind of follow up on, on another objective. So on and so forth. And Hall Fam, uh, kind of greeting out for this control ward here, losing half his health. Uh, but Hugh plays is coming right. Oh, gets taken in with the shockwave as well. Hall Fam dropping down really low, but Stormskills is out of mana. And Mount Life couldn't go for a root here. But uh, Arrow Crutching going on to Stormskills, and he's going to get taken out there. TP quite late here. I don't think it's going to do anything. And uh, Slade going to go. And the Glacier Prison misses, but it doesn't matter. Harrison coming in. So the TP ends up doing something. And uh, here is Sprinkles coming in. Uh, Mount Life being forced to flash away. Sprinkles continue on. There's the Wither, and I don't think there'll be any more follow up on this. Maybe they'll be able to take out Slade. No, the counter strike comes in. There's the stun. Uh, stun's actually across the entire front line there on both sides. But that will be the end of that. So overall, <laughs> that was a, an interesting exchange. But again, neither team in exactly a very capital position to maybe take drag right afterwards. Kim is alive, full health with Flash, even has ult as well. And Hong Fam respawning, coming towards the dragon as well. Everyone going back to their respective lanes. Towers are still up. And actually, if we look at the towers, I think every tower is pretty much near full HP. So it kind of just really shows just how, how this game has been going. Yeah, it's an extended laning phase for sure. We're we're 17 minutes into the game, if that clock is correct, not from the pause. Yeah, and once we're still in this extended laning. Although that once a team does make a critical error, uh, like you, you, we're gonna expect towers to go down like immediately. It, when one, it's not even gonna be one tower. It's probably gonna be like a tower, uh, two towers, and like dropping a bunch of vision into the jungle, or a dragon into a tower, so on and so forth. Like, it's not going to be just one small thing. The death timers will be long enough. Uh, damage will be explosive enough where if someone just gets caught out, like, you didn't really lose much. It wasn't an extended trade. It's just someone died instantly because they were caught. And they'll, be, yeah. have, uh, they'll have enough HP or, like, cooldowns to really just continue going and take an objective for them on the map. Triforce is completed for... Oh, oh and uh, here Slade comes in. coming in. Hugh plays a lot of trouble. There goes the combo. And Hugh Play is going to get taken out there, even with Flash. So very nicely played there from Slade coming from the blind vision there. And I guess Hugh Play is not reacting in time. Duel in the top lane. Sprinkle's going to go down. There goes the Counter Strike under the tower. Picking up the kill. 30 CS up. And three kills over. This Jax is going to be a large problem very soon once these towers start going down. Here's the first Blood Tower. I don't think Kim will be able to hold this one. So U of M picks up the first Blood Tower. Yeah, at 19 minutes into the game, it's it's crazy to say Baron's going to be spawning in one minute. And Jax also does get the top tower as well after that very impressive solo kill. Yeah, and not a single dragon has been taken. Uh, no. Normally this never happens, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's extremely rare that not a single dragon falls before a turret falls. Almost always a dragon gets taken before first blood turret gets taken. Especially, yeah, exactly. e even on like a bigger exception that it's 19 minutes and two towers went down at pretty much the same time for U of M. So now that the towers are down, they can look to get some deeper vision, uh, especially on the top half since it was mid and top that did go down. So U of M could look to do a unusual early Baron dance, but they don't really have the damage until bot lane makes their way over to really put some DPS onto the Baron. So like, e even Houston be like, uh, pretty sure they can't threaten Baron anyways, even if it's blind, unless they're all missing for like a solid minute, then why the heck didn't we check Baron kind of thought process? Uh, and yeah. there's a fight bot lane. Harrison is down here. Here's the root on the Martins being forced to flash. Counter-Strike not gonna be able to land. There goes the vulnerability and it's not gonna be enough, but Mar Mertens uh, looking to try and put some trades back. Kim is also around the area, and a lot of uh, U of M in the bot side here, so maybe they're going to try and look to force a tower dive or knock this bot turret down, get the dragon. They have quite a bit of vision around here, and uh, this looks like a free dragon for U of M. Yeah, and they set up the side lane perfectly too, so that Nasus was still farming at his top T2 tower while Harrison just came down and took it and took the drag with his team. So he's and even helping his team all around the map as well, not just 
Yeah, and just... U of M, they are sticking around down here, so I think they're gonna be able to get this bot turret as well. Yeah, they are not backing up. Yeah, they'll be able to get that turret. Uh, Harrison gonna be going back up to the top side, and if Nasus doesn't take that turret, this is gonna be a huge loss for Houston. Like, they would lose a turret, a dragon, and it's definitely not one of those storm skills here. Uh, gonna run into Kim. Kim actually kind of blindly ran into here. I don't think this was really worth it. Yeah, he ends up paying with his life to go yeah. for an invade that you don't really know where Oriana is, and Jax is just kind of right off onto the side at Tier 2 turret, and Nasus just wants to push that wave and go back. So uh, I wouldn't say that would be a great choice right there. No, he saw the mark, and he just knew he had to have it at that point. I think he expected, because there were three bot lane that Oriana had just backed off, but yeah, very risky play, and ends up with his ends up dying and not even getting the blue buff over too so he doesn't even get the mark yeah so this is a 3k lead the dragon is down all the outer turrets down uh for houston so oh man storm skills in quite a bit of trouble gets stunned up and there goes the unleashed power but slade coming up from behind gonna drop down and now sprinkles in a lot of trouble yeah he ends up getting taken out there goes a counter strike on a huge place and he gets taken down as well harrison is unstoppable now it's uh 40 CS up, it, the, the gap continues to increase. Harrison continuing to go in, there goes the Shockwave, the Wobble Combo, and Kim is gonna get taken out, has no wall, gonna die, and Merton's the, and look at that, just taken under the tower. Will he get the Leaf Strike off, flashes forward, gets him stunned down, Merton's in a lot of trouble, and Tarek is just trying to do his best to peel off, but Harrison taking another too many tower shots. There goes the vulnerability, and they're trying to peel away, but they're just inside of the base, and they're gonna be able to try and get out of the, get out of here, they're just diving so bloody far. I think the tier two is still up. Yeah, it is. Actually, it just yep. went down. Oh, right now. But regardless, they dive into the base, and Zev wasn't even there. So that was more or less just pick after pick for U of M, and they <laughs> just get two turrets out of that and three kills. So increasing the gold lead to six, six and a half k, and I think they can probably just prioritize Baron. Uh, right after this, or just continuing to knock down turrets. Only the tier two for top lane left for Houston. Yeah, absolutely. Harrison coming up huge in that fight. Absolutely. He's a monster right now. I don't think there's anyone on the University of Houston that can deal with him right now. Yeah, 80% kill participation. And actually, <laughs> there, half of the deaths uh, from Houston are actually on Nasus. So it's kind of very clearly showing like where the problem is. And I said this earlier that if Jax becomes that threat, no one's going to be able to deal with him. And that's going to draw so much pressure. Oh, Kim uh, decided to look for Baron Vision here, but going to end up getting caught out. Has to drop his ult, but I, I don't think this will be enough. The Glacial Prison is going to, yeah, Harrison picked up that kill and Sprinkle's going to get taken down. 5v1, he's already died enough time. Yeah, sick. death number six, and uh, I think they're just gonna go for the Baron here, on top of more kills. Yeah, the, 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 the Houston is starting to fall apart here. Yeah, it was uh, it was looking kind of grim with the uh, Nasus in the top lane, having to burn his flash so often from Slade constantly coming back over and over again, and there just didn't seem to be any answer from University of Houston. At all. Uh, yeah, I, I think the when Kim got the kill uh, in uh, U of M's jungle, got that stack and got the hit level six, like that was just a, a huge deal. But anyways, uh, Hong Pham gonna try and go for a stun on the Harrison, but he's just like, uh, maybe I'll just kill you. And now Hong yeah. Pham is gonna pay with his life trying to go for the stun, and they pick up another turret on top of that. So it's objective after objective. Uh, bot lane is pushing for the U of M as well, so they'd probably be able to get that wave if they get this inhibitor and they're healthy enough. Uh, push, come, the siege is coming on forward and yeah, this tower is just going to go down. They don't have, uh, it's a 5v4 on top of the 11k gold lead that it is. Missing a member, so that inhibitor is going to go down. Uh, I can probably say they're going to back up here. I don't see why they would continue. It would be the safe choice to just back away here. Spend all that gold that they just got from the Baron and the two towers reset and close it out systematically yeah absolutely there's not that much that university of houston can do there can do in this game even Syndra was just not able to get going and same with the kindred they have a really squishy comp and the front line of the university of manitoba is just too huge right now like even in just 
uh, I'd say I'd be willing to say that uh, Harrison is just straight tankier than Sprinkles, and that's a problem because <laughs> normally it's the other way around, and just uh, Jax would just have more damage uh, on top of his uh, off tank bruiserish style. But if you are losing in both aspects, then <laughs> yeah, yeah you're that's... you're in for a bad time. And Kim exactly. most definitely not uh, suitable for Kindred Eye. Yeah, there goes the stun, and Harrison just gonna jump over the wall. Invulnerability coming out, but he is, he's a hes a dead kindred right here. Gonna get rooted. Harrison is legendary. 9-1-3. Uh, 12 of the 14 kills of U of M are... He, he's involved in 12 of, of the 14, so it, that's that's where the carry is. Uh, bot lane, not even a single kill. No deaths? Well, some assists. Yeah, it's a real uh, stark comparison. We see the combo coming out again from Oriana. Sindra's gonna fall. Went, lots of damage, and there's just like nothing really that Houston can do. They don't have the right team comp for it. They're just too far behind, even with the with the prop team comp. And Harrison can just kind of run in here and just beat down whoever the heck he wants. Stun coming down on the sprinkles. Pop wave is coming in, still with the Baron buff ticking, and they're just looking to knock down more towers. Mid inhibitor has also just gone down as well. So this is three inhibitors down. And this is going to probably be the final push. They're just waiting for that top wave to come in. UM probably will continue. No, they're deciding to leave. What? Uh, thinking they don't have enough, so they really want to... S not taking any chances at all. They want to just pick up that dragon, pick up uh, blue, pick up their own jungle, deny some as much jungle farm as possible, and take it up to one last team fight after spending all their gold. I guess so, yeah. I thought they definitely had enough to finish there with uh, Baron up super minions as well, coming into the base of the University of Houston. But yeah, I guess they're just going to play it slow and systematic, and they just continue to take all the all the camps, all the farm. And this should be the final push for the game, I can imagine. Absolutely. We look, and the mid laner's down two levels, top laner's down three levels. Jungler's down, ah, uh, jungler's same levels. ADC's down one level, and support down one level, so that there's a big EXP differential as well on top of the uh, large gold gap here. Uh, but they do get to catch up on some EXP with three lanes pushing in, and there are no objectives on the map for uh, U of M to take, uh, as they've pretty much already taken them anyways. So U of M, they just gotta go for this push here. But if Houston does, by some miracle, hold out, uh, that's actually going to spell a lot of bad news for U of M. So, but I, I, I don't really see that happening. The, the team comp doesn't seem, it doesn't feel very wombo combo-y. Like Cinder would have to land a five-man stun. And here they're going to try and make something happen. Jumping all oh, and has a four-man shockwave with the team. Oh Counter-strike, four-man counter-strike. Tower's going down and everyone's just so low. There goes the heal from the Kindred Elf, but it's just not going to be enough. And that was the wombo combo right there. Four-man Shockwave and the four-man counter-strike stun, and that was a, it was a, <laughs> an annihilation oh, right there. Combo! Oh my goodness, we need to like. I think that was a violation of their basic human rights there. Oh my goodness, that was nasty. This rated R, rated R. Children, please look away. Oh my and goodness, that was disgusting. Oh. Although overall, I'm pretty sure they could have just shockwaved the front line and just killed the front line, and <laughs> they, Houston probably still wouldn't be able to fight back regardless. Yeah, probably, but it's this. I mean, definitely... you may as well just like throw in that extra value. It's like, oh, no, man, I got this sick four man shockwave. They don't matter. On top of the four man counter strike, it, it doesn't really get much. That That's like the wet dream for a Jax right there. It's like, oh, everyone's in a nice big ball. It'd be a shame if I just jumped in there and stunned everyone. If we look at the straight kill participation, 19 out of 21 kill participation on Harrison. 17 out of 21 for Slade. So the top jungle really took this game over. I mean, Storm Skills also has a pretty high kill participation as well, 15 out of the 21. But we definitely know this all came from top lane. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. So they're either going to have to do something about the jacks, or they're going to have to reconsider a, a different pick for uh, Anasis or something to fight the Jacks, or they're gonna have to camp top lane. Uh, I, I don't really remember Kindred really going up there to 
you know, kind of stop it. Or if he did, no. then it wasn't doing much. Didn't really affect the lane. And by by the time that maybe they realized that it was a problem, it was kind of like too late. Anyways. So game one, going to the U of M. Uh, I believe this is a best of three, so both teams will switch sides? Question mark? 